Good morning. Here we are. Uh, the faithful remnant. One of the things that we're doing this year uh, is we're uh, spending time being thankful and trying to put thankfulness at the beginning of our our concept of uh, prayer and, and con uh, <clears throat> consideration. So one of the things we want to do today is to be thankful is for our beautiful area and the updated campus that we have. So we would like to begin our time together by gratefully acknowledging the native peoples on whose ancestral homes we gather, as well as the diverse and vibrant native communities who make up their home, make their home here uh, in Michigan today. Welcome not only to those who are gathered here in person, but to those who are joining us online via Zoom and Facebook. If you're joining us on Zoom, please feel free to share your prayer request via the chat box. We're glad that you've joined us and uh, thanks for being with us in this season of Epiphany. And let us begin with a moment of silence. Nations shall come to your light and kings to the brightness of your rising. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Let us pray. Almighty God, whose Son, our Savior Christ, is the light of the world, grant that your people, illumined by your word and sacraments, may shine with the radiance of Christ's glory, that he may be known, worshiped, and obeyed to the ends of the earth. Through Jesus Christ our Lord, who with you and the Holy Spirit lives and reigns, one God, now and forever. Amen. Reading from the book of Isaiah. Isaiah was a Hebrew prophet who urged God's people to challenge, inspire, and encourage God's people. For Zion's sake, I will not keep silent. And for Jerusalem's sake, I will not rest until her vindication shines out like the dawn and her salvation like a burning torch. The nations shall see your vindication and all kings your glory. And you shall be called by a new name that the mouth of the Lord will give. You shall be a crown of beauty in the hand of the Lord and a royal diadem in the hand of your God. You shall no more be termed forsaken and your land shall be no more be termed desolate but you shall be called, my delight is in her, and your land married. For the Lord's delight in you, and your land shall be married. For as a young man marries a young woman, so shall your builder marry you. And for the bridegroom rejoices, rejoices over the bride, so shall your God rejoice over you. Hear what the Spirit is saying. Thanks be to God. Today's psalm is number 36. We can read that together. Your love, O Lord, Lord reaches, reaches to, to the heavens, heavens and, and your, your faithfulness, faithfulness to the clouds. Your righteousness is like the strong mountains, your justice like the great deep. You save both man and beast, O Lord. How priceless is your love, O oh God. Your people take refuge under the shadow of your wings. They feast upon the abundance of your house. You give them drink from the river of your delights. For with you is the well of life, and in your light we see light. Continue your loving kindness to those who know you, and your favor to those who are true of heart. 
The next reading is from the first book of Corinthians. This reading is from one of the first letters that Paul wrote to the early churches. In this letter, Paul urges these early Christians to know their gifts and to use them for the glory of God. Now concerning spiritual gifts, brothers and sisters, I do not want you to be uninformed. You know that when you were pagans, you were enticed and led astray to idols that could not speak. Therefore, I want you to understand that one speaking by the Spirit of God ever says, let Jesus be cursed. And no one can say, Jesus is Lord, except by the Holy Spirit. Now, there are varieties of gifts, but the same Spirit. And there are varieties of services, but the same Lord. And there are varieties of activities, but it is in the same God who activates all of them in everyone. To each is given the manifestation of the Spirit for the common good. To one is given through the Spirit the utterance of wisdom, and to another the utterance of knowledge according to the same Spirit, to another by faith, the same Spirit, to another gifts of healing by the one Spirit, to another working of miracles, to another prophecy, to another the discernment of spirits, to another various kinds of tongues, to another the interpretation of tongues. All of these are active by one and the same spirit who allots to each one individually just as the spirit chooses. Hear what the spirit is saying. Thanks be to God. The Holy Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ, according to St. John. On the third day, there was a wedding in Cana of Galilee, and the mother of Jesus was there. Jesus and his disciples had also been invited to the wedding. When the wine gave out, the mother of Jesus said to him, They have no wine. Jesus said to her, Woman, what concern is that to you and to me? My hour has not yet come. His mother said to the servants, do whatever he tells you. Now standing there were six stone jars, water jars of the Jewish rites of purification, each holding 20 or 30 gallons. Jesus said to them, fill the jars with water. And they filled them to the brim. He said to them, now draw some out and take it to the chief steward. So they took it. When the steward tasted the water that had become wine and did not know where it came from, though the servants who had drawn the water knew, the steward called the bridegroom and said to him, everyone serves the good wine first and then the inferior wine after the guests have become drunk but you have kept the good wine until now. Jesus did this, the first of his signs, in Cana of Galilee, and revealed his glory, and his disciples believed in him. The Gospel of the Lord. Lord Christ. Let the words of my mouth and meditation of my heart be acceptable in your sight, O Lord, my strength and redeemer. Amen. I will have no wine before it's time. <laughs> no, we're not going to talk about making wine. I believe Jesus had that down pat without my help. Yes, 
although today we will talk about wine because it's sort of the center of today's gospel from John. But it's really, is it really about wine? Before we talk about the wine, let's talk about John's gospel. According to theologians, Jesus performed about 37 miracles. Some say 33. Either way, that's a bunch of miracles. But in John's account, there are only seven miracles mentioned, and he never calls them a miracle. He calls them a sign. In other words, John is trying to point us beyond the actual miracle, that it leads us to something more and more meaningful, that there is something more important than, let's say, a glass of wine. I believe John is trying to tell us that God is the source of all life, joy, happiness, and love. That God's presence in our world is through the human presence of Jesus. But John seems to write from a different plane for a different audience, which is not similar in nature compared to, say, the other three Gospels of Mark, Luke, and Matthew, which are called the Synoptic Gospels, and that's because the story is similar in nature. I was really worried about where's the beef in today's gospel. You all remember the commercial from Wendy's, where's the beef? Yeah, and I was looking for it. So I had to do some real homework and digging as well and thinking, which I've told you all before, it gives me a headache, but you know, that's beside the point. But I was able to find a lot of information looking deeper than just the words of the gospel. I received a new education about the Jewish lifestyle and traditions. Then all of a sudden, it was like I could see all kinds of questions and something was important in every sentence of this gospel. So there was a lot of beef. It was a true awakening for me. The gospel starts by saying, that was the third day there was a wedding in Cana. Now, the first thing I discovered is that the Jewish weddings back then lasted seven days, which is a little different than today. But still, in today's services, they still have 13 traditions and rituals that exist. So it was the third day when Jesus and his disciples arrived and were they there the whole entire time, or did they arrive there on the third day? It just picks up on the third day. Possibly the third day is a symbol of the third day when Jesus rose from the dead. I'm unsure, not sure, but it could be the way John's writing these things. This could be John just leading us down the road with Jesus to the cross. But Jesus and his disciples were there. It also says that Jesus' mother was there in Cana with him. I looked up the distance between Nazareth and Cana, and there was conflicting differences, everywhere from four miles up to 10 miles. So I just went to my handy-dandy Bible, and it said eight miles, so that's what I'll stick with. If they were in Nazareth together, I, I guess they could have made it in one very long day trip to get there. As I've said in other sermons, think about the train back then. It was a challenge at best. Something I could not figure out, did Jesus and his mother travel together or separately? And where was dad during all this? Because in John's account, Jesus was busy finding his disciples until the wedding. And he found him and they traveled with him, showing that his ministry had truly started there was no mention of Mary in John's gospel until now. It hasn't been much of a gospel until now. It was only a couple of sections. And even then, she was not called by her name, Mary. It was the mother of Jesus, or as we heard today, woman. One thing was for sure. Either they were related to the couple being married or very close friends. It didn't say who knew who. But it does seem that we sort of invite people to weddings the same way now as we did back then. We just don't pick up a phone book and start picking names out of it. 
You all remember phone books, don't you? I still got <laughs> one at home. I love them. Now it jumps right into the problem. Mom says there's no more wine. They ran out. So Jesus makes a profound statement. He says, woman, what concern to you and to me? My hour has not yet come. The other times Jesus called his mom woman was in John 19, 26 on the cross when he says, woman, here is your son. Now, where I come from, if you called your mom woman, you'd be wearing a house slipper on the side of your head. Even on a good run, mom could hit a target. Then I discovered that the term woman, when used by the Jewish and Greeks, was a sign of respect, which I was glad to discover because I just can't see Jesus being disrespectful to his mom. Technically, Jesus is saying to his mom, what exactly do you, does this issue have to do with me? And what would you have me do? Well, Jesus' mother knows the tradition of those days. To run out of food or drink over those seven days would have major fallout for years to come from the whole, for the host, the bride, the groom, as well as the chief steward. This would have been thrown up in their faces for any event that might, they might attend. We all know how we judge weddings today. Things like, ah, oh, it was a beautiful day. The couple looked so beautiful. The service was great. I had to put that in there. The food was awesome, and the free bar was right on time. Now, if they run out of beer, that's not a problem for me. I don't like that stuff anyways. You run out of wine or tequila, we got a bit of a problem. But then I really don't drink much anyway, so it wouldn't be that big of a problem, I guess. Then Jesus says, my hour has not yet come, which in John's gospel, when Jesus uses this phrase, he is implying his death on the cross. Jesus knows what his mother wants him to do. He also knows that once he does something like this, he has truly started his ministry and his march to the cross. So even though it wasn't what we would call a major miracle, like curing the sick, raising the dead, disease, feeding the hungry, the lonely, casting out demons. It's still very important. This is his first public miracle or slash sign, which means Jesus is now starting his march towards the cross. It is truly started for him. It also means that Mary, if you think about it, was present for his first miracle. So technically, she was witness to everything from his birth to his death. So, as I said, Mary knows exactly who and what Jesus is. But maybe not to the degree of what will happen to her son. Now, in a typical Jewish mother's way, she doesn't tell Jesus what to do. She looks at the service and says, you all do what he tells you to do. Well, enough said on that. What she's expecting of Jesus. He shows the respect that any child should show their mother and father. You could also say Jesus understands the Torah just a bit and the Ten Commandments. You know, number five. Honor thy father and thy mother. But before the miracle, it talks of six stone jars. Please notice the word stone. This is important Jewish traditions and rituals. A well-off Jewish person would have stone jars for the cleansing rituals that would occur before meals and before going to temple. The stone jars would not allow for impurities to be embedded in the jar because this would taint and prevent the ritual from, of purification. Most normal people would have had pottery jars for water, but not necessarily for the rituals, but for human consumptions. Let me ask you all a question about this now. 
Can you imagine the work required to carve out or chisel out stone jars that held 20 to 30 gallons of liquid? I don't think they had any bridge ports or lathes, or for that matter, electricity to run these types of machines. So the servants do what Jesus instructs them to do. They fill up six jars to the brim. That could be a reflection of God's love for us that it's abundance. And took some to the steward. Well, guess what? It was wine. Now, we don't know if Jesus said or did anything to show others that this was a miracle or who he was. He just did it without drawing attention to himself or the need for thanks, which is the way he lived his life in his ministry. He didn't need attention to his presence, but the presence of God through him for all of us. Now, the chief steward tastes the wine and tells the groom that he did the opposite of what most people would do. He waited and served the best wine later in the celebration. I thought about it, and maybe we would do the same. We'd serve the top shelf stuff first and wait till everybody was a little bit tipsy and then break out the cheap stuff. Let's also realize that during this whole process, only the lowly and the poor, as in the servants, the disciples, and the mother of God knew what he had done. They are the ones that don't matter much in the world of the rich and privileged. But in Jesus's world and ministries, they are truly the ones that matter because to Jesus, we all matter. And he was here for all of us. Throughout all the gospel, Jesus shows the importance of all living creatures, even when it upsets the powers to be. Then the gospel ends by saying, this was Jesus' first sign and revealed his glory and his disciples believed in him. Well, I, that caused a couple of questions. We know that throughout all the gospels, they always are stating that the disciples just never really got it. They just didn't understand what Jesus was saying. So did they understand that he was the son of God or maybe a great prophet? Which we know in the Hebrew Testament, there were miracles performed by people like Moses. Or did they think Jesus was just a really good guy? But we know through 2,000 years of interpretations that they loved him and followed him to the end. And guess what? I'm sunk in then. So we put everything together. It was the third day of a wedding. Is this a reflection of his ascension into heaven? Were they friends or family? We know that Jesus technically is 33 years old. And at, the, at that time, and his ministry has begun because all the disciples are with him. He shows his love and respect for his mother and the laws of the Torah, as well as all the people that were invited to this wedding by doing this sign. Then there is the importance of the wedding to his mom. The stone jars are important, and what they intended for it teaches us something new about Hebrew rites. We have the people at the wedding that do not realize what Jesus has done, and the fact that this is more than just wine. It is his ministries. They are now in motion. He has revealed his glory and his divinity. Jesus' ministry is to teach us and to help us build the church and to prepare us for his departure and the arrival of the Holy Spirit. It's now in full swing. It can't be stopped. Everything Jesus is doing is shifting the importance of the sign to a far greater reality which lies ahead for all of us today, as it did back then. The fact is, Jesus has manifested his glory and establishes that he is truly the Son of God. Amen. Amen. Why don't you do the affirmation of faith and then the prayers? Okay. <clears throat>
Together, let us read the affirmation of faith. Standing as you may. We believe in God, whose love is the source of all life and the desire of our lives, whose love was given a human face in Jesus of Nazareth, whose love was crucified by the evil that wants to enslave us all, and whose love, defeating even death, is our glorious promise of freedom. Therefore, though we are sometimes fearful and doubting, we trust in God, and in the name of Jesus Christ, we commit ourselves in the service of others to speak justice and to live in peace, to care for the earth, and to share the commonwealth of God's goodness, to live in the freedom of forgiveness and the power of the Holy, of the Spirit of love, and in the company of the faithful, to be the church for the glory of God. Amen. Amen. Prayers of the people, the response will be, Lord, hear our prayer. Let us pray for the church and for the world. God of love, we pray for your church. For Michael, our presiding bishop, Bonnie, our bishop, and for all lay and ordained ministers, and for all who seek you in the community of the faithful. Equip us with compassion and love to carry out your work of reconciliation in the world. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. <clears throat> Lord, we also pray for our leaders, Joe, our president, our representatives and senators, Gretchen, our governor, Ken, our mayor. May peace and justice guide all of their decisions and actions. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. We pray for the greater problems of the world, for peace in Haiti, hunger relief in Afghanistan, typhoon relief in the Philippines, and those who are suffering from COVID during this recent Omicron uptick. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. God of justice, we pray for the earth, your creation entrusted to our care. Stir up in us a thirst for justice that protects the earth and all its resources, that we may leave to our children's children the legacy of beauty and abundance that you have given us. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. God of peace, we pray for those inside and outside of our parish, for all who visit our food pantry, and for our parishioners who are visiting the Holy Land this week. Also, let us take a moment to pray for those who are sick and those in our hearts, either silently or aloud. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. God of peace, we pray for those who have died. Feel free at this time to name them silently or aloud. Let us pray to the Lord. Let us <clears throat> take, a, take a moment to lift up any prayer requests that we have, whether submitted on Zoom or here locally. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Almighty and gracious Father, in this time of epiphany, peace, bestow upon us your gentle and quiet spirit. Make us faithful stewards of your great bounty for the provisions of our necessities and the relief of all who are in need. To the glory of your name, through Jesus Christ, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Let us here confess our sins against God and our neighbor. Most merciful God, 
We confess that we have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed, and by what and by what we have done, and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. We are truly sorry and we humbly repent. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us and forgive us, that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways to the glory of your name. Amen. Almighty God, have mercy on you, forgive you all your sins through our Lord Jesus Christ, strengthen you in all goodness, and by the power of the Holy Spirit, keep you in eternal life. Amen. May the peace of the Lord be always with you. And also with you. Peace be with you. Peace. 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 Be seated for a minute. <clears throat> I have a gratitude challenge uh, for this week. <clears throat> you know, it's uh, one of the, uh, early in the week we had uh, uh, a gratitude scripture which is from the book of First Chronicles. And it says this, Give thanks to the Lord, for he is good. His love endures forever. So, with that in mind, here's our gallon of gratitude challenge for this week as a part of our year of gratitude. Be truly present in at least one conversation this week. That's an interesting idea, right? It's not just to have the conversation, to be truly present. That means to listen, to participate, to actually make the conversation move past those, well, how are you? Well, I'm fine. Good, I'm glad. And walk away. Then write it down and tell it to at least one other person. In other words, share that talk or that conversation. Um, what did the uh, feeling present feel like? How did you do it? Was it worth it or was it a waste of time? Hopefully not. Also, we got these lovely blue weight, uh, wristbands that say gratitude on them. Please wear them as a reminder to be thankful and to have gratitude as a part of our life. Help us remember when, when we complain that we can correct it. So you can get a bracelet here at the church at some point if you don't have one already. 2022 is our year of gratitude and I am thankful you are here. The scribes of the Lord, the honor do his name, bring offerings and come into his courts with prayers. All things from the name of the Lord, know thy own, have we given thee. Amen. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. Redeeming God, who cannot keep silent, 
Because your vindication of your people shines out like the dawn, and your salvation like a burning torch. You renewed the nature of creation by the grace of your saving power, and through your children, and though your children wander from ways, you call us a crown of beauty and to a, a royal diadem in your hand. In the death of your son, we show you showed us you the death of the stranger. But in his resurrection and ascension, and by the coming of your spirit, you showed us the height and breadth of your law. And so we thank and praise you with the company of heaven, singing the hymn of your blessed and boundless glory. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. Gracious God, in your Holy Spirit, you empower us with gifts of wisdom and knowledge. And by faith and healing and miracles and prophecy and revelation and discernment, this, you send the Spirit upon us now that your word may see your that your world may see your divinity through our humanity. Sanctify this bread of humility and this wine of joy that we may be, that they may be for us the body and blood of your Son, Jesus Christ, who had suffered with his disciples, took bread, gave you thanks broke the bread and gave it to them, saying, Take, eat, this is my body, which is given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. After supper, he took the cup. Again, he gave him thanks. And he gave it to his disciples, saying, Drink this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you and for many for the forgiveness of sin. Do this in, as often as you shall drink it in remembrance of me. Together, Christ has died, Christ is risen, Christ will come again. God of justice and mercy, as that cane of the wine was good, bless your whole creation. As that cane of the wine ran short, be close to us who know the need of you. As that king of the wine ran out, succor those living in the midst of death and dying in the midst of life. As that king, you save the best to last. Flood this earth with the wine of your kingdom, that justice may roll down like a river and righteousness like a never failing stream. Until we see you face to face and recognize our diverse faces in the face of your son, to whom and with whom and in whom in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all honor and glory is yours now and forever. Amen. And now as our Savior Christ has taught us, we are all to say, our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done. On earth as in heaven, give us today our daily bread. And forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Save us from the time of trial and deliver us from evil. The kingdom, the power, and glory are yours now and forever. Amen. Lamb of God, who takes away the sin of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, who takes away the sin of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, who takes away the sins of the world, grant us your peace. The gifts of God for the people of God, take them in remembrance that Christ died for you. Feed on him in your heart by faith with thanksgiving. The body of Christ, the bread of heaven. Body of Christ. The body of Christ. The body of Christ.
Let us pray. Almighty and ever living God, we thank you for feeding us with the spiritual food of the most precious body and blood of your Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ, and for assuring us in these holy mysteries that we are living members of the body of your Son and heirs of your eternal kingdom. And now, Father, send us out to do the work you have given us to do, to love and serve you as faithful witnesses of Christ our Lord. To him, to you, and to the Holy Spirit, the honor and glory now and forever. Amen. Go now, seek out Christ wherever he may be found, bring light to those in thick darkness, a voice to those no one speaks for, and hope for those no one cares for. May God make you a sharer in the promised light, May Christ fill you with his sense of what is right, and may the Holy Spirit be to you like rain that gives life to the fertile earth. Amen. Amen. Go forth into the world to love and serve the Lord. Worship outreach and love for our world. Have a great week, everyone. Have a grateful week. Let's put that one. Let's put that one. God bless you. Well, good morning, Padre. How are you? Well, oh my goodness, a voice from Israel. How are you? I'm fine. I'm sitting here in the bar with uh, Jan and uh, and Kathy and uh, some other pilgrims here. Shalom. We are trying to uh, recover from uh, from jet lag as we have uh, been up for, you know, a good day and a half or two. Uh, thank you for the belt buckle. Uh, a couple of people recognize it. Well, I mean, you look, you, you look, don't look the worst for wear. It looks like a beautiful place where you are. You? <laughs> uh, where, are you, where are you? It is. We are in St. George's Cathedral, a guest house um, in the bar, uh, in, the, in the kind of lobby area. And we're awaiting our COVID test results. Oh, you can't go anywhere until you get those. Is that correct? Oh, it, it's about fifty degrees and raining, and uh, we are one of three tour groups in the entire country. Uh, the oh, airport was completely yeah. The airport was completely deserted. The plane was half full. We we were all able to sleep on like three or four seats, you know, because there was just nobody on the plane, and um, uh, and so uh, we will get our results hopefully. Uh, by tonight, they've got another, they're feeding us here uh, very well. And um, they, we will hopefully get our uh, results today and uh, maybe in time for an evening stroll over to uh, the old city um, and then really take off uh, with feet, feet uh, both feet on the ground tomorrow with an aggressive agenda for the next 12 days. Well, sounds terrific. Uh, uh... Obviously, you were thankful. <laughs> <laughs> well, thank you. I just thought I'd pop in and see if the Zoom works okay. Works well from Israel. Well, take care of yourself. Be good. Have a great time of spiritual time. All right, my friend. I'll talk to you soon. God bless. Bye bye. Bye, Steve. There are about three blocks from the old city. Yeah. It's, yeah. it's beautiful. Uh,